So somebody asked me to do a more in-depth video about my uh, oxalic acid vaporizer that I made. So I'm just going to go through um, what's on the inside of this box here. So I mentioned this is the, the PID controller. That's this unit right here. Um, the other thing I mentioned in the last video is this is the uh, solid state relay. It's um, in, in function, it's very, very similar to like a regular relay. It switches on and off. But it can do so really fast without deteriorating. Um, and this is like, you know, tens or hundreds or thousands of times a second you can switch it on and off. Where regular relay would burn out, it would spark, it can't handle the kind of current that something like this can. So um, so this PID controller is made to control one of these solid state relays or SSRs. Uh, it's got a 24 volt signal that goes on to one side and then the other side switches the uh, the heating element. So power cord comes into the back. Um, I think I've got got ground just going to the to the chassis, just kind of give us a little safety there. Um, the neutral is split and goes to the PID and also directly out to the uh, to the plug here to the heater the the hot wire goes over to the switch here and it's best practice to have a, a fuse or a relay before that I don't have that in here so it's uh, yeah, I usually do but I, I didn't kind of threw this one together so uh, hot goes through the switch that I can turn on and off and then it's uh, split off goes to one side of the switch on the solid state relay and then um, also to the uh, PID controller to supply power there. From the PID controller there's two wires that control the solid state relay uh, positive and, and negative and they go to the positive and negative on the relay. Then the thermocouple goes to um, the screw terminals for thermocouple. Okay, so just a tip. Um, it does matter what uh, orientation, which polarity you put the thermocouple on. I was just having a problem with uh, an error. It was giving a UUU across the screen. If you get that, it means the thermocouple is out of range. Either it's broken or it's more likely it's not connected. These, these came on the thermocouple and they were loose and so I just took them off and just wired them directly. I, uh, I reversed it and the temperature was not correct. It was actually going down as it was heating up. So so yeah, apparently polarity matters. Um, in this case, the red striped one is positive and I've got the wires just going directly to these screw terminals. Just a little tip. To see how, um, how well this is working, I put some water in the pan. Um, so if it, uh, as it gets up to 212 degrees, we should see boiling. So one of the things that's apparent is that um, next to the heater, we're getting hotter than uh, on the side of the thermocouple. You see it boiling off right here. We're not at the boiling temperature of water yet, so we shouldn't we shouldn't be boiling. Um, and on this side, it's it's uh, oh it's hot, but it's it's not uh, it's not boiling water yet. So that that's going to be a little bit of an issue. The uh, oxalic acid will start vaporizing at 315 degrees. Um, Above like 370 degrees, it'll actually break down into formic acid and carbon monoxide. So we don't want to get it that hot, but we do have you know a range to play with. So so let's take it outside. I'm going to measure a gram, and then we'll see uh, if it can vaporize some oxalic acid. Okay. So I got my respirator and my gloves and my uh, eye protection on. Measured out a gram, gram of, uh, of acid, and I'll turn this on, get 
Okay, so there actually is a slight vapor coming off of it right now. I think that's the, uh, yeah, right about the boiling point of water. This uh, oxalic acid's a hydrate, so it's got a, a water molecule bonded to it. So this is actually water being driven off of the chemical. So then once all the water's gone, we'll just have uh, the actual oxalic acid that then will melt and should vaporize. I don't know if you can see any of the vapors. That's just steam, I think. But it's good, it's going away from me, so. So this is a good um, test of, it's, it's like I said, it's like in the 30s out right now, so it's really cold. This is only a 100 watt cartridge here. The only reason I'm using only 100 is because I have 150 somewhere I couldn't find. But apparently 100 watts up to the task. Not very exciting. If you look really closely, it's like it's kind of formed a block. And it's kind of... It looks like maybe there's, um, there's something between it and the aluminum. Like it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's melted and it's completely touching the aluminum. Very weird. Still a little bit of vapor coming off, but very slow. So the top of it is only two, 200, oh, it's going up and down. Well, try poking it with a screwdriver, huh? It's a very scientific thing to do, right? Okay, so. Now at least we have the surface area. It's a little bit better. 170 degrees. Obviously there's some kind of gradient or something. Um, let's take this up and see what happens. This uh, infrared thermometer, it's not bad, but Something shiny like aluminum, it, it's, it's not very good. Um, it's not giving me a, an accurate reading. I should go and get my... Uh... Okay, so now we got something turning to a liquid. It's, it's a little bit brown. Because I'm getting such a lively reaction, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. So we have some milk. Now we have what looks like boiling oxalic acid. Oh, there we go. Try and get away from the fumes here. Apparently, that's what it looks like. Okay, and that's happening at a set point of 360 degrees. Or rather, I got the set point of 345, but it overshot the 360. So 
So that could be close to the breakdown temperature, but 